Without further ado, let's go to the uh, head coach of City Kickbox, and let's go all the way to Auckland now. So we go from England to Auckland, New Zealand. Coach Eugene Behrman standing by. Hello, Coach. How are you? Hi, Eric. Uh, good to see you again, my friend. Yes, a pleasure as always. And by the way, is everyone okay over there? I'm hearing of some uh, crazy weather, cyclones, things of that nature. Is everyone all right? And every, every, everyone's good. I mean, we had a lot of delayed flights. There's guys that are only just getting home like today. So it's like, you know, like four or five days later, but um, everybody's safe. Okay. Glad to hear that. Um, we're still buzzing over here after what Volk did on, on Saturday night, Saturday night here, Sunday in Perth. Uh, could I ask as far as how the fight was going to play out, is that what you expected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, for the most part, I, 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 it was exactly how we expected. Um, was there anything? No, there was nothing really. Nothing surprised you nothing about the fight? Did you? Th- I mean, nah. obviously, you thought he was going to win. You were confident, but um, Islam striking, ultimately, how he did on the ground with Islam, anything like that. Now, look, the, you get, the great thing about Islam um, is you can calculate every single, every little thing that he does. And uh, just about everything we, he did uh, in terms of the striking on the, on the, on the ground, uh, we, we had, we, we, we studied, uh, bar one takedown, to be honest. There was one one kind of body lock he did where he kind of went the other way and then he changed direction with it, which he, which we've never seen before in any previous uh, video. But uh, for the most part, um, the good thing about Islam is you can uh, take a very good measure of what he does. The, the hard part is just you know what he's going to do. The hard part is just stop it. Mm. How did you score the fight? <laughs> oh, look at it. <laughs> I of course uh, thought we won, but uh, I will never rule out the fact that um, I, I, I have uh, I will be biased, right? And, and there's there's no way I can get around that, even if I try my hardest not to be. Um, uh, I I will always be biased. You will, you you will a human being will always be biased. So yeah, I thought we got uh, two, three, and five. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought two was close, but. Uh, uh, in, in hindsight, after watching it, I thought we won too comfortably, and three was actually the more swing round, the close round. So um, I would say two and five, we comfortably won, and then three was the one that was you could mix it up both ways. You know, I remember when you were in studio here uh, prior to MSG, we spoke about the possibility of Alex getting this fight. It hadn't quite been yeah. confirmed just yet. Um, it was days away from being confirmed. And I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, that you said you actually initially weren't in favor of him doing this, right? Um, did, you know, in the process of the training camp and just being around him, fight week, did you ultimately change your mind or were you kind of, obviously you're going in there, you're going to back your guy, you're working with Joe and the whole team, but you're going to support him. But in the back of your mind, were you like, oh, I, I, I still don't love this? Or did you change your stance as the fight approached? Oh, no, no, I, I, that was all in terms of when you make a decision before uh, before a fight is ever announced, in which direction you you go. I felt Volk, I thought the better direction at the time was probably uh, a couple of couple more featherweight contenders before he went up to Islam. That's all. I just thought, let's do a couple more, let's get a little bit more seasoned in certain areas, and then let's go up. So I wasn't against... Uh, him going up, I was just po- possibly. Um, I played the devil's advocate and said maybe we should wait a little while. And and but once the decision was made, uh, it was just it was it was all aboard. You know that, that that's that's the call for war and our team. You know once the decision's made, then uh, it's uh, all 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 engines ahead. Um, I never for once thought that Volk couldn't do it. It was more about putting Volk in the best position to do it. Yeah. Uh, you have been in this position before trying to become a double champion. And obviously there's a difference mm-hmm. between 45 
going up to 55 and 85 going up to 205, bigger jump. But was there anything that you learned as a coach the first time around with Izzy that, you know, maybe you applied that you did differently, that you, that you, that you looked at differently this time around with Alex? Um, no, no, not, not, not really. Like you, and, and the obvious answer is this, this weight division for a reason. And mm. you, <clears throat> you, are, you are never going to be able to get around that fact. So you are always going to be fighting a bigger, stronger man. When you go up in weight division, it's about, um, which really comes down to, have you got enough skills to offset the strength and weight advantage that's what it's about and it was that was the same thing with israel and it was the same thing with volk and i would have to say and with the benefit of hindsight that both those guys probably suffered from the same um fate in terms of they just weren't quite skilled enough to offset the size advantage if you look at how both those fights um panned out and um look that that's that's just how it is sometimes um you know like we we can just like people like israel and folk they can just win the win the they can win the title and then have two fights and retire. <laughs> huh. and, or, or they can just stay in their division and just rule their division forever. But that's just not in their nature. It's just that they just don't have it in them to be satisfied with where they are. They just will always look for the bigger and better place, the place that can push them a little further, the place that can challenge them the most. And that's a unique characteristic like that's they're the one percent of the one percent they're not the champions that are just going to stay there and be satisfied they're going to take the biggest fight so who's the biggest fight you guys think Pereira is the biggest fight we're taking Pereira or you guys think Jan's the biggest fight we're taking Pereira they, they will always they just have it inside them that's what um that's how you become great that's how you become legendary and that's just they just have that inside them if you if you understand what I'm saying yeah for sure is there anything, and by the way, have you been able to watch the fight on television afterwards? I, I, yeah, I've watched it uh, one time. I've watched the replay, and that's where that's where I thought um, two, because I thought two was kind of the swing round that I wasn't sure who won. But then I was like, we probably took two, and three was probably the round that was up for contention. But Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anything that you wish – Alex had done differently in the fight in retrospect. Yeah, look, I think <clears throat> Alex like alluded it to it himself. Like uh, after the fight, he he probably gave Islam a bit too much respect too early. Mm. So one and two, and and I, I don't know if there's a way around that. You always have to. And, you know, you always have to approach a fight uh, very cautiously. Um, you've got to figure a guy out first. Um, that's kind of our MO. That's kind of how we approach the fight. So I think Alex just wishes that he had kind of got in his comfort zone a little earlier and he was able to push the pace a little earlier. But he was in a, a kind of a cautious frame of mind early, which he, which he eventually got out of. But he probably he needed to get out of that a bit earlier to make this fight um, definitive. What would you like to see Alex do next? Would you like to see him try to get this rematch or do you want to see him go back down to 45? <laughs> um, oh, oh, if, if you're asking me, and I'd say, oh, it's never my decision, it's a team yeah, yeah. decision. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, go, go back to 45. I mean, I've, obviously there's a, there's a fight that's sitting right there. Like, right. Uh, I don't know what Islam's doing like if he's going to fight uh, soon or if he's fighting twice a year or I, I don't know even know anything to do uh, I'm not sure what his plans are There's a, we have a fight locked in if Alex wants it and uh, it's a very difficult fight in many ways a much more difficult fight than the one we just had um, versus um, yeah yeah so um, I think that's a challenge and I think he should probably take it 
Why do you say a potentially more difficult fight than the one you just had, Yair versus Islam? Why do you say this one could be more difficult? Uh, well, preparation-wise, um, like I said, like you can calculate and study everything Islam does, and that's uh, and just and and we did that very well. And, and you know, credit to Joe, Frank Hickman, and Craig. Uh, they studied Islam, um, you know, into the early hours of every night and they figured out every little possible path and step he would take and they tried to negate it. They did an excellent job. Whereas Yair, Yair will always bring, you, you will almost every fight see something new, but you will also, which is hard, but you will, the, the way that he throws the shots and he does unpredictable, um, you know, some of his techniques are very unpredictable and hard to read. And each fight he has, he changes his pattern a little bit sometimes. So uh, that that's what I mean. The unpredictability of Yair versus the predictability of Islam, but you just can't stop Islam. That's the kind of – that's what makes it difficult from my perspective is trying to calculate all of that, whereas I think the coaches had a pretty good job of calculating Islam. It was just coming up with ways to stop Islam is, 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 is the difficult part of that journey. Yeah. You you probably don't know this uh, because you're and 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 God bless you for this. You're not on social media, but the main thing that everyone in the MMA Twitter sphere, if you want to call it that, um, what we have been debating since Saturday has been who's the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Can I be uh, cheeky enough to ask you who you think is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world right now? Well, let me just answer this. The number one pound for pound fighter in the world is whoever the people decide. Fair. Because it's because the number the pound for pound fighter is a people's choice award, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, is it Islam? It's definitely not Islam, in my opinion. Is it Israel? It's definitely not Israel. Islam doesn't have, in my opinion, the credentials and the uh, good enough stand-up, uh, refined enough stand-up skills to be pound for pound, uh, you know, in, in that place. Israel doesn't have refined enough wrestling skills um, for him to be pound for pound number one. But I know someone that does have really refined stand-up, equally as good wrestling and wrestling defense, who probably deserves that number one spot, who has uh, fought the who's who in his division, defended many times, and uh, tried to go up and wait. And that guy is Alex Volkanovsky, who I think is the rightful um, pound-for-pound king, uh, even despite the loss. If you base it on the things that I'm basing it on, and that's just, uh, just a skill set that is able to take on any fighter uh, at any weight, should he imaginary right. uh, in an imaginary world go up to heavyweight or yeah light heavyweight or yeah I love that and no That's one could my say, opinion. That's no one could say you're biased because you're, you're speaking about one of your own Izzy in the, in that discussion as well so um, I I appreciate that insight but like you said it's uh, I mean there's no real right answer to any of this and that's what kind of makes it fun. Yeah. Could could I ask you know um, when we had you in studio we talked about like you know having to kind of give everyone a kick in the behind before the the MSG card and and not wanting you to compare your students necessarily, but I feel like Alex is almost like a coach's dream. <clears throat> he just seems so professional. He never strays from the game plan. So to speak, I mean, I'm sure there's times where you're maybe like, oh, I wish he would do that or that, but like just always so solid out there. Um, would that be like, do you ever have to worry about his motivation? And, and again, I know, you know, he's, he's often in Australia. He's with freestyle. He's with Joe Lopez, but from your perspective, uh, and since you're so open with your perspective, we appreciate that very much. When you are working with him, are you ever questioning the motivation? Are you ever feeling you, you need to give him a bit of a of a jolt, so to speak? Yeah. Well, I tell you what. Like, I'll, I'll look. Let me allude to a conversation I had with some of the other coaches um, at CKB, and we were talking about we were talking about in particular champions and. Uh, how most champions, when you become a champion, you experience a newfound 
stardom and a newfound uh, your newfound wealth. And in most cases that I've seen, not just my own champions, but uh, other champions uh, in the UFC, particularly the Western ones, they almost all, in all cases, let off the gas. Uh, and I was just alluding to my other coaches that there's only one champion I know of that when he became champion, completely ignored the stardom, the media, the money, and all this, and in fact increased his work ethic. And and that, that was Alex Volkanovsky. And I, I'm not inside some of those other camps, so I'm looking from outside. So that so my yeah. case, so everything's from outside. But in my opinion, there's only one champ person who became champion who actually like he, this, you're talking about a guy who still, still after his fight will be back in the gym within five to seven days, even with a broken hand. Mm-hmm. He was back in the gym, mucking around on 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 the bag. Like that is um, this is a rare gift. This like this uh, motivation that he has to just uh, be the best fighter in the world. It's like it just goes beyond every other want and need that he has, uh, apart from his family, of course. Right. I love that, and uh, it is great to yeah. hear that. Um, like I said, we haven't talked since MSG, so I'm dying to ask you this question. And we talked about it actually earlier on the show. I still believe, Coach, till this day, that that fight was stopped early. I really still believe it was stopped early. I'm talking about Izzy and Alex. Your reaction there leads me to believe that you maybe don't agree with me, which uh, I commend you for, but I still believe it. And I've seen other fights. And again, I have the utmost respect. I think Mark Goddard is the best referee in the world right now, but I've seen him give leeway to other guys who don't have you know, the the history and the 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 stakes and the champ, all that stuff that Izzy had in that moment. That was like his one vulnerable spot. And I felt like the plug was pulled just a little early. Agree or disagree? Disagree. Okay. All right. Fine. Disagree. Why is that? Disagree. And and look, Aaron, you know my background, so I could I could quite possibly just have an innate yeah. uh, feeling to kind of um err on the side of caution. So but I believe the chances of Israel um, coming out of that um, without being further hurt were were minimal. He was probably going to get hurt even more. Okay. And to that end, I'm glad he stopped it because he prevented Israel from being damaged even further. And we're in a position now where we're able to be healthy and have a second go at, um, you know, trying to beat that monster. Mm. Are you, so, uh, you know, I'm happy with the stoppage. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Are you, are you happy with yeah. the circumstances here? Like, are you happy with the, considering how it ended and you feel like, you know, it was a good stoppage. Did you want him to wait a little longer to get this fourth crack, second crack, whatever you want to say? Are you happy with the date, the circumstances, where he's at right now? You know, are you at peace with all this? I would have liked for Israel to. I mean, if, he, if I had a choice, yeah, which I quite often don't, uh, then I would probably have waited longer and prepared it. Uh, you know, just to have given Israel a little bit more time between um, between, between the stoppage like that and the next fight. And you like even in an ideal world, I would have done what they do in boxing. I would have brought in a couple of guys for Israel to warm up on and then fight. But we don't, in the UFC, we don't have that choice. And quite frankly, Israel is 100% adamant that he must be the next person to fight Alex Pereira, beyond all doubt. So much so that when they were talking about Pereira fighting, I can't remember it was like four or five weeks. It was for one particular card. I think they had no main event or they had someone pull out of a main event at the end of last year. Yeah, yeah. So much so that so much so that Israel 
when there was talk that Pereira was going to fight, um, Israel was like, okay, then we'll, we'll fight. We'll, we'll, we'll fight. Before Israel had his surgeries and everything, Israel was prepared to uh, take the fight on four to five weeks notice if Pereira was willing to take the fight. Wow. Was that ever a real thing? For a little while, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to speculate on how real it was, but it was a very real concern amongst uh, myself, Ash, and Tim that uh, Peru was going to step in. I can't, I don't know that I can't remember, remember the circumstances. Was it possibly? Or, uh, or, or was it for the light heavyweight title when, uh, when um, Yuri pulled out? Yeah. So something they were looking for a main event for that or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. and uh, there was there was talk of Pereira wow. maybe taking the fight and Izzy was like okay then we'll get on a plane and take the fight damn versus Pereira but you wouldn't have liked that right I wouldn't have liked it but I wouldn't have been able to stop it as well right <laughs> and by the way what, just Izzy. you mentioned just surgery Izzy is. Well, what surgery did he have if you don't mind me asking oh, just a minor surgery on his on his ankle Okay. Is he okay now? Uh, yeah, fine. It was uh, just like less than a, it was like very minor, like a couple of hours in hospital. He was out the same day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in a perfect world, like when would this fight happen for you? And and by the way, I love the idea of the tune-up fight. We don't get that enough in, in, in MMA and the UFC. I think it's a great idea, but you know how it is. They want to run it right back. Like for you, like June, July, is that what you were hoping or even later than that? I mean, I would have been happy with just April. Uh, well, we are, yeah. yeah. Well, May, 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 okay. June. But right. uh, you know, give or take, it's uh, I'm okay with the timeline that we have. Like, as he's uh, uh, has been training for a while now, so um, we're we're in our usual frame of mind and our usual state where we're like we're calculating the days as they go by and, and monitoring the progress and. We're in an okay spot. Okay. But we're always in an okay spot this far out. We're always in a spot where I'm, um, where I want more to happen. Right. And so I, so I push for more to happen. Were you impressed with Alex? Did he surprise you? And and I'm saying I'm talking about Alex Pereira, of course, uh, with what he did in that um, fight. Yeah, I'm always impressed by Alex or by fighters of that caliber. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was impressed with uh, the way that he fought, the tenacity that he fought, the way he came back from adversity. And uh, what always has impressed me with Alex is his ability to cut a big amount of weight and for it to seemingly have no ill effects on his cardio. And and he has a world-class uh, gift. And that's the gift to be able to take a shot and recuperate himself and come back in and and perform. Yeah. I can't wait for that. Uh two two last questions, then I'll let you go. Thank you for the time as always. Um I just as a follow up to our last conversation, I'm just wondering now that Izzy is the hunter rather than the hunted. Now that he's the challenger again for the first time in a while, do you see a difference in him, in his demeanor, in his approach at the gym? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's a very unique position to be in um, when you're the hunter. And in many respects, I think it's the better position to be in. I think the much harder to be position to be in is the flip side of that. Yeah. Um, where you're trying to stop all these guys um, whose sole purpose in the world is to take what's yours. Um, that's, that, that comes with its difficulty, but the, the stronger position to be in, I think, is the guy, is the hunter, is to, to be the hunter, the person who has all the motivation, um, is, is you know doing all the things that they do, that, that they their whole life is directed towards um, taking something of you. I think that's a very strong position to be in that we haven't been in um, for a while. I saw that position. <laughs> I saw how powerful that position is with Alex Volkanovsky and the camp that he just had and the motivation that he just 
and showed like it's it, it's a very powerful position to be in that should be used mm. um, to our advantage here. And and lastly, and I want to I want to preface this question because I know a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, he's talking. Everyone who clips this off, does not, please note that I am asking you this question, that you are not bringing this up. I am asking you this question and feel free to plead the fifth. But as you may know, your guy, Dan Hooker, set the world on fire on, on Monday when he had mentioned that Islam cheated. Um, is there anything that you can say about this? Do you, do you have the same information? Do you believe that he cheated? Do you believe that he took an IV before the fight? Um, I spoke to Alex about the fight before Dan tweeted and he alluded to it. But if I'm being honest, I thought he was joking because I did because of the way he brought it up. So I wasn't really sure. But then Dan had a series of tweets, which were pretty, you know, pretty poignant. Uh, is there anything that you can say about this accusation? We have reliable information to a point, and I will half plead the fifth. Can you half plead the fifth? <laughs> you can plead the two but, and a half. Look, <laughs> yeah, the two and a half. Yeah, yeah. but the information it falls short because. Um, for 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 several reasons, and and one of them is that you can actually take an IV before a fight. It just has to be a hundred mils of of saline with uh, every twelve hours in a twelve hour block. Okay, so. Uh, what it more has to come down to is whether you believe that there that 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 people are gonna take this uh, saline at 100 mils and then stop. Mm-hmm. And the information also falls short is that, uh, and, and the fact that there, from that team there were two fighters. There were two fighters from that same team, and the information can't reliably tell us. Yet, which fighter mm. illegally hydrated, or whether they went over the hundred watts. Mm. But I don't know how information can tell us that, without a doubt, that someone uh, in their team is in that four used an IV bag to rehydrate, which is. Uh, not illegal if you're using 100 mils. You just got to ask yourself if it's only 100 mils you're going to use within 12 hours. Why would you even bother? Sure. Um, that's the information, and it, the only reason I could tell, the only reason I'm going to even repeat this, and Dan's going to, I, I, I advise Dan against even talking about it. Right. Uh, you uh, look. You, that, as you can see, that information has holes in it. That's what I'm alluding to. Okay, but it also there's enough information there to be like, ah, this is why Alex and the rest of the team are laughing because we're like, man, some, something's going on there. Mm. We just don't, you know, we just can't reliably say what it is, and it's just, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because the whole sport. Uh, should be played on an even playing field. But then again, you know, you, you can't reliably say that Islam cheated. So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't go out there and say that in the same manner that Dan did. That's just, I just don't think you can reliably say that. But there's something going on there, um, whether it was uh, Zubir or whether it was Islam, something's going on there. If it was Zubir and not Islam, then Islam should be distanced. You know, if anyone on my team was doing something illegal, Right. Decided to do something illegal, and I would immediately distance the team from that person or something. And, and so, I don't know, Ariel. Maybe something will come out in the wash. Maybe it won't. But I think the more important thing is to focus on the fight and not worry about that so much. And the fight was what a fight. Um, congratulations to 
Islam and Javier and his other coaches who I'm not so familiar with, but congratulations to those guys. Uh, they won. And, and, then, and congratulations to Alex. Um, super proud of Alex and uh, what he was able to do. And, um, yeah, we move on. Give us the next big challenge because that's what these guys do. I love it. Uh, love talking to you. It's always a privilege. It's always a pleasure. You're a class act coach. I appreciate it very much. And I should have started the conversation with this. I apologize. Congratulations on winning the uh, the Gym of the Year Award. I'm surprised you didn't fly over from uh, from Auckland with Dan and uh, Izzy to take that. It's so unlike you to not want uh, the spotlight. Uh, but congratulations. Well-deserved to both you and the team. And uh, it's it's really incredible what uh, what you guys have done. So uh, another another notch on the belt, so to speak. Congrats on a great great night on Saturday, and and looking forward to a big year for you guys. Thank you as always for the time, and stay safe out there. Thank you, awesome. Right. Thank you, brother. There he is, Bye-bye. Coach Eugene Behrman.